Hi guys, welcome to my channel. So finally, here we go, Final Cut Pro on my brand new M2 iPad Pro. I've been playing with it all day yesterday and here are my initial thoughts on it. But before proceeding, I have to tell you that guys, I've never used Final Cut Pro on Mac before. Unlike other YouTubers who are pros at using this software, I never used it. I always used to use LumaFusion on my iPad Pro to edit all the videos. So everything which you see on my channel is edited right here on this iPad using LumaFusion. So first, the cost. It is £4.99 per month or £49.99 yearly after the initial 30-day trial period. So let's fire up the app and choose a new project. You can name it and then set the settings either to auto so that it'll get the aspect ratio frame rates from the video clips you add or you can manually set them. You can also set the orientation to portrait meaning you can edit all your YouTube shots, Instagram Reels and TikTok videos on the software as well. You then get to import your project files. You can choose from the Photos app, Files app, the camera or even just start blank. I'll choose all my clips from the files where I've saved for this project along with my voice recording and the background soundtrack as well. Once you are in, the screen is divided into three sections. First on the top, clockwise, is your preview window. Then you have the project files window, which will show all the files which you've just imported. And then below is the main timeline. Now guys, on LumaFusion, I work directly on the timeline itself. So let me do the same here as it feels very convenient for me. Let's drag and drop the first video clip onto the main timeline. And then I will add the voice track as well below it. Now, the Apple Pencil Hover. This is only available on the M2 iPads. So as you can see, you don't have to touch the screen. Just bringing it close will trigger actions like waving some sort of magic wand from Harry Potter. Initial thoughts, it's kind of helpful, but sometimes it feels annoying as I don't want to trigger that action. Especially hovering over the timeline makes it scrub and it plays my voice as well. I don't want to hear that squeaky speed scrub of my voice script every time I just move my pencil over the timeline. In LumaFusion, it only plays when you hit the play button. I wish there was some setting to turn this off. If there is, do let me know guys. I don't like this, this feels annoying. Next, you can do the usual add more video clips onto the timeline. You can choose the clip and use this button which gives options like appending to the main timeline or inserting it on top of an existing clip or even overwriting it. Or you can just drag and drop them wherever needed, which is what I'm used to on LumaFusion. You can trim your clips by simply selecting them and just dragging them like this, or you can use these icons at the bottom. And yes, like traditional video editing apps, there is no scissors icon, which I was kind of searching for, but instead, you have these three different icons which can trim the video clip where your pointer is or trim the beginning or the end. Now you can do the same with your voice track as well. So just split, drag wherever needed, remove the portions which are not needed by hitting the delete button and that's it. Now, if you select a clip and click on the inspect button, then it opens further settings related to the clip where you can control the audio of that clip along with speed, scaling and even effects. Selecting a clip and clicking on the volume button allows you to adjust the volume button of that individual clip. You can also multi-select clips just like this by dragging and selecting them and then you can adjust volume of all of them at once. It's really handy. Now, if you click on your voice track and hit inspect, you get a few more options to control and edit your voice track. And the settings which I'm most excited about are voice isolation, loudness and noise removal. Let's try that noise removal getting from the A12Z iPad Pro 2020 version. Not that it was getting any slower. And testing it on and off, guys, I can certainly make out the difference. The hissing background noise which you get when you record voice is totally eliminated here. This really is so handy. Even loudness, it increases the volume levels. So that's pretty neat. You have inbuilt voice editing capability right here. And yes, about the timeline, you can pinch to expand or collapse it. And if you click on the options menu, then you can set the height of your timelines, 
very useful once you start adding your b-rolls and layers and audio tracks so you can get a much more compact view of your timeline you can also drag and adjust the windows like this both the timeline one and even the top windows or you can actually hit this button to completely hide your project files now there is another display icon and using that you can actually go into picture in picture mode where you get the full view of your timeline with a floating preview window that is pretty neat now back to the timeline if you look at these icons at the top of the project file then it has several other things like transitions titles backgrounds etc let's look at the transitions there are several preset ones which you can use just drag and drop as needed and that transition gets applied at your desired position you have backgrounds as well again which i feel are pretty awesome in LumaFusion, i have to import my own but here you can choose from a selection so just like that you select a background place it onto the timeline and then i'm just trying to find a video clip which can go on top of that and just like that you see the background is applied to my video clip now there are several advanced features like you can actually remove the background of your video clip and apply this dynamic background from one of the pre-selected ones i'll have to play a little more with it guys to get into those so maybe in a future video next text effects guys i was super excited to check what they are because in LumaFusion there isn't that good selection it's just very basic so i'm hoping that there are more here unfortunately there aren't that many but at least we do have a few cool ones and hopefully apple can add more via software updates at a later stage so just drag and drop the text effect on your timeline and when you click the inspect button again you get quite a few settings where you can change the text you can change the font colors and the font face along with many other settings very useful and there we go you just have your animated text over the video just like that also you have the option to use live drawing just click on this icon on the top and then you can use your finger or your apple pencil to draw or write something and it automatically gets animated that is pretty neat especially if you're an artist you can take full advantage of this feature next let's talk about that famous jog wheel you can enable it by using this icon and then you can snap it to corners like this press and hold it you get this dial sort of control and using that you can precision scrub your timeline so you can pinpoint that exact location in case you want to edit in that place or add layers at that exact position and then you have the ability to record directly from the app just hit on the camera icon on the top and it opens up your camera app you can shoot your video even with the ultra wide camera and you can record this at the resolution you want and if you have ProRes enabled you can shoot videos in ProRes as well it's very handy and your videos are directly available in the project files once you stop recording and you can add them to your timeline as needed there is a multicam feature as well which allows you to join groups of videos together of product shots which have taken in several angles i have to try this more out in a detail but yes first impressions it is pretty handy then we can add the background tracks so i got my own background track saved in the project files i'll just drag and drop below like this it's not covering my entire video project so what i'll do is i'll just long press and you get this menu where you can choose copy it's similar to the right click and then once you're copied you can paste it as needed and this will cover your entire timeline now one cool thing about this is that when you hit the inspect button by selecting your soundtrack as well then you get the option to either fade in or fade out your soundtrack now at luma fusion this was not possible so you had to do by adding keyframes and then gradually reducing the volume but here that functionality is built in and it works perfectly fine and that's it guys once you have done you just hit this icon to export your project and that gives you several options to choose the settings and then that's it you export the file now guys final cut pro supports magic keyboard or any other external keyboard case like the one which i have from esr gear and that works perfectly fine and if you are that person who loves to use keyboard shortcuts then this is a perfect option you can also use the trackpad to scrub and scroll and with external monitor support we have stage manager here on my big screen monitor and you can use the keyboard and mouse to control and edit your video clips 
One thing which I've noticed is that the Final Cut Pro app doesn't go quite full screen, like say how Safari browser is going here in stage manager view. It just stops at that 80% view. Probably Apple will address this via a software update. It's not a huge thing because you still get quite a big area to work and you have that full keyboard and mouse control as well. So initial thoughts, I really like it guys. The software is pretty amazing, but I can't shake off this feeling that LumaFusion is pretty close to what Final Cut Pro is on the iPad. And that software you just pay once. You don't have to pay a monthly fee to keep it running. But yes, there will be several more editions and I've barely touched the basics here, guys. If you dig deeper, there's quite a lot in here, guys. I'm pretty sure of it. I mean, I've seen some training videos where it's amazing that, you know, you can actually edit clips without changing the timeline or the duration. You can actually increase and decrease. You can join and split. There is so much more and I'm hoping to figure all that out as we go. But yes, these are my initial impressions about Final Cut Pro. I'm glad that it's finally on the iPad and I can't wait to dig deeper into it. So that's it for the video, guys. Do let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And if you're enjoying my content, a like to this video will go a long way, guys. Also, please do consider subscribing so I can keep making these videos for you. And as always, thanks a lot for staying with me until the end. I will see you in my next video. Bye for now.